From the studios of the Richmond Register, it's this week's edition of the Richmond Register Sports Show. Every Thursday night at 9 o'clock, Richmond Register Sports Editor Nathan Hutchinson and Richmond Register Sports Writer Ricky Barker will talk about this week in Madison County Sports. Welcome to the show. The Richmond Register Sports Show is brought to you by Nuevo Vallarta, a neighborhood restaurant with indoor and patio seating, a family-friendly environment, and quality, authentic Mexican food at reasonable prices. Nuevo Vallarta. All right, welcome to this week's edition of the Richmond Register Sports Show. I am Richmond Register Sports Editor Nathan Hutchinson, and back after a week off due, due, due to illness <laughs> is Richmond Register Sports Writer Ricky Barker, a little under the weather last week, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, we want to thank Zach Cumbus again for stepping in yes, from, the, thank you, Zach. from the progress. He uh, did well. He's great. He's great. Yeah. He really helps us out quite a bit. He's, he's covered some games for us and stuff. And he's a really good guy. And uh, he's good. You know, he's been a real help to us. So. Yeah, he's my seat partner at the KU <laughs> <Katie> basketball <laughs> games. <laughs> yeah, we often, on football games, we often uh, down there on the sidelines together taking pictures and everything. So Yes, thank you for the charger. Yesterday, <laughs> Zach. <laughs> See, Zach's a great guy. So he is. If you guys, you guys check him out at easternprogress.com. They do all kinds of good things with Eastern sports. Uh, a lot of we, you know, we kind of focus on basketball and football. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of the other sports. Uh, lots of features and cool things, and yeah, they, they do, do a great podcasts job. and videos, and they they're really cool. So give them a, give them a, a look and follow them on Twitter as well and everything. They do a great job. So, but um, this week here in Madison County, the last weekend was championship weekend for some of our local folks here. It was it was very cool, uh, kind of what went down on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, on Saturday up at the Kentucky Horse Park, we had the um, KHSAA State Cross Country Championships and uh, history. We had uh, right made history. Yeah, Madison Central's Connor and Kiera O'Shea swept the three A class, uh, the three A titles, the individual titles. It's the first time it's ever happened that a pair of siblings had won. Uh, two state championships in the same year in Kentucky, so it was a really cool experience. I was there; it was really, really kind of cool thing. As we we actually had talked, uh, you and me had talked before that you know I was like, I had won it last year uh, as an eighth grader, and everybody mm -hmm. kind of expected she would win again. But we were hoping that Connor would uh, be able to do that. He's uh, he finished thirteenth last year, and it was his senior year, so we were all hoping that he would get a chance to do that. And he went, uh, he went for it. They went right to the front early, and him and uh, Brady Masters set the pace early on, and uh, then he pulled away. And by the time he crossed the finish line, there was nobody within sight behind him. Right. So. They both went up pretty handedly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. I can. Of course, Kiara always goes to the front of the field, and she just blew everybody away and, and won it pretty easily. But, uh, but led, by, uh, led by Connor, the, the boys finished fourth, and uh, Brady Masters finished second. He, he had a nice kick at the end. Uh, he was out there pushing um, Connor, and mm -hmm. Connor kind of pulled away, and then down the last stretch, uh, Brady kicked it in and went from about fifth to second there at the end. And so, very cool for the sophomore to finish second. Yeah. So he's uh, uh, Connor will be gone next year, but maybe Brady can pick up the mantle and he can be the next state champion. It's, uh, so. We've had four cross country state champions uh, from Madison Central and since 2015. And Brandon Fields won it in 2015, so it's uh, very cool. And we will have Connor, Kiara. Brady and Coach Matuse, James Matuse, on here in a little bit. So we will have all those folks on. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, the, the girls finished 18th, led by Kiera. And like I said, the boys finished 4th. And so that was a very cool experience on Saturday. It was, very, it was fun to be there. It was Very exciting, yeah. I'm sure. And you did a nice feature on those kids last mm -hmm. year. And if anyone wants to go back and check that out, richmondregister.com. Um, Talk a little bit about their, their mom and dad. You yeah, talk to their them. background. Yeah, their mom and dad were both uh, at Eastern, both wonderful runners. Uh, their mom, Jamie, uh, All American. Their dad um, was really great for Eastern on the men's team. Um, and they still run as a family. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Connor said that he was going to play soccer, which Gavin, his brother, also plays soccer. Right. Um, and that he moved from soccer after uh, speaking with his parents, and they still run. And he was like, I want to kind of get into that. And he started running, and then Kiara came along with him. Yeah. <laughs> they both had played soccer, and then they were like, let's let's run, you know, cross country and track. And yeah. obviously, it's paying <laughs> off. <Yeah. laughs> it's, they're doing really well. Yeah, Jamie was a four time All American at, at Eastern, and mm -hmm. uh, as it gives. Um, um, Ken, their dad, is actually from Dublin, Ireland. He came, yes. here, he came here to run from from Ireland to come to EKU. Mm -hmm. So. And uh, they have, uh, like I said, four kids now, mm -hmm. and uh, the young, the youngest daughter actually she runs too. So maybe they'll right. some more coming along the line. But Kira's 
Uh, she's already won two state championships as only only a freshman. So. It's definitely in the genes. <laughs> <No kidding. laughs> definitely in the O'Shea genes. Yeah. And so a day later over in Lexington, we were right back up there again for the Michael Caudill eighth grade football team was in the Kentucky Middle School Football Association state championship game. And they wrapped up a second straight undefeated season uh, with a 26-6 win over Corbin in the state championship game. Uh, those kids, I think, I think it's uh, what's it now, 58 and one over the last wow. three years, with the only loss coming in the middle school, the sixth grade state championship three years ago, wow. two years ago. Uh, so that's a great group of kids. Uh, and the championship game was Kenyatta Harge with three touchdowns. It would hit two rushing and one defensive, and then Brady Hensley had a. A 55-yard touchdown rush as well. That game was 6-6 just before the half, and there was a fumble, and Kenyatta picked it up and ran it back about 70 yards for a touchdown, which made a big difference in that game, and then he added two more touchdowns in the second half. So congrats to those kids. It's, uh, it's coached by David Hensley. who was a, He used to be a high school coach at East Jesmond, mm -hmm. uh, Dunbar, and a bunch of other places as well. Uh, he played at Eastern years ago. So congratulations to those kids, and we actually had a chance to talk to Coach Hensley afterwards, and so here's what he had to say. All right, we're here in Lexington with Coach David Hensley. The Caudill 8th grade middle school team is the state champions. This is uh, this group's been together for three years with their 45 and one two state championships. Uh, They've been together actually uh, four years. Most of them have. They came over in fifth grade and started playing on the sixth grade team. And their combined record now together with Kenyatta and much these kids is 58 and one. 58 and, 58 and one. one. They won two state championships. They were been in it three years in a row. The only three years they could play in it. Eligible for it. And they're two and one state champions. Yes. Yeah. Back to back undefeated seasons. Back to back undefeated seasons for these guys. Just a outstanding run. I mean, they we struggled a little bit today, but it's a tough grind. I told them two days in a row, two really good football teams. It's a grind. Came back out second half and felt like we played a lot better and got the job done. Yeah, Twenty six six win over Corbin. It's the second straight uh, title. Uh, it's on your son's birthday too, so that's kind of cool. Oh, it's awesome. I mean, I told him, I said, there's no better birthday present than win a state championship back-to-back -back years on your birthday. Last year, we missed his birthday by one day, but it was still a nice present. So yeah. it, never, it never gets old. You come over here three years in a row, it never gets old. It's always fun. Yeah, and Kenyatta, man, he's a beast. You just hand him that ball, and he just yeah. runs He's a him. beast, man. I and mean, that's like I said, when you give Kenyatta the ball, you get him headed downhill, he is a load. He's a heck of an athlete, great kid, just a great kid. And they got a little nice little one-two punch with him and Brady. It's nice to get a little outside-inside thing going. And really, they are a good combination for each other. And not just those guys. This whole team is a good football team. I mean, it takes 11 guys to play defense, and we get out there and get after them. Uh, I think the last couple of years, our starting defense has only give up six points the most they've ever given up in one game. And Kenyatta had all four touchdowns there because he had the defensive touchdown too. He had a defensive touchdown day. I think actually Brady ran a green one early in the, in the game. I think Brady had a oh, long great. touchdown to start the game, and then I think we punched two or three in with Kane. He had a scoop and scored, yeah. which really changed the game right before half. Yeah. So it was, it was nice. Yeah, it was nice. Uh, he's just a player, man. We got some kids on this team that's just football players. And, you know, I, okay, Kenyatta, Brady, they get a lot of the daggum pub, but – in the end, those guys in the trenches kind of win for you. Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations. Thank you, Nate. Yeah, it's a great moment for those kids. It's like I said, it was championship weekend in yeah. Lexington for <laughs> Madison County folks. So uh, very, very fun time up there and uh, very good to see all those kids doing very well. So uh, moving on to high school football, the regular season wrapped up last week and uh, all three teams were in, in, in action. Only one of them, unfortunately, came away with a win. Uh, Berea did finish out the regular season with a 42-14 win over Jellico. Uh, snapped a three-game winning streak. Uh, they went up 27 nothing right off the bat, kind of took control on a just cold, cold night. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Bone-chilling night over in Berea. Uh, Jalen Whitaker had two touchdown passes. Jared Whitaker had uh, two touchdowns. They had a, a one on a TD catch and one defensive touchdown. Also had two interceptions as well. Nice. Uh, Timmy Thompson with a pair of touchdowns. And Jaden Cunningham had a rushing touchdown. Uh, Berea will uh, play Kentucky Country Day, undefeated Kentucky Country Day, mm -hmm. next week. Uh, actually, this Friday and Louisville in the first round of the Class A yeah, playoffs. Some tough so, competition. Yeah, like they played the they played that team, you know, KCD here in Berea a couple weeks mm -hmm. ago. And they actually played them pretty tough. I mean, mm -hmm. it was uh, they had the lead just before the half, and then it kind of snowballed on them. And but uh, you know, Coach Step told me he said, you know, we you know we we'd rather play them again. We felt like we played right. pretty well, and mm -hmm. you know, we wanted to go up there and take a shot and see what happens. But uh, KCD's tough. I haven't lost a match. I haven't lost a game all year, and they've like, been ranked number two, I think, pretty much all year behind. I think. Uh, like, in Pikeville, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so they've been uh, right there at the very top. And well, another, were, another great win over Jellico. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's two years in a row they've been yeah. in Jellico. But, uh, and you were just a few miles across town at yes, Southern. It was. And it was also cold over there as well. Yes. And uh, unfortunately, kind of shorthanded Eagles 
going yes. up against a juggernaut, uh, oh. number one ranked bull. Academy. Undefeated. I mean, just 10 straight now and just wrapped up their entire regular season undefeated. Um, they knew it was going to be tough, and they knew it was going to be even more uh, difficult with um, their quarterback, by Storm, injured. He was there, kind of keeping his team going. Um, and Cole Carpenter and Walt Smith kind of took over under center for him, kind of switched out. Um, and they fought hard. They fought hard, but, I mean, Bull County, they are just... Find yeah. a way to score any way they could. Yeah, I think they um, came out right off the bat and scored real quick, didn't they? Yes, they yeah. did. Yeah, and then there was some fumbles and stuff. But um, by the second half, uh, they uh, Bria or Southern had picked it up and, and was able to kind of give them a little little dose of not going to score on us anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but it was forty two seven. So Southern got a touchdown. Um, it's Walter Smith got a touchdown pass um, from Cole Carpenter, who was five of fourteen, but he threw an interception. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, had to make some changes there. I get the yeah. feeling that Tobias probably could have played, but it was, you know, it's a cold night. Regular, yeah. Final regular season game probably didn't really mean anything. And I uh, got a big game coming up at home. Yes. They, got, they get to host a first round playoff game. The only one of our local teams that's getting to host a local mm -hmm. uh, a first round game. But they will get Woodford on, on Friday night over at Berea, and they uh, they beat those guys the first time around. Yes, so. they did. So hopefully with Earlier the, in the season. Yeah, hopefully with Tobias back, though, we'll be able to uh, get that going and, and move on to the second round. Mm -hmm. They probably have to go on the road in the second round. They probably yeah. had to face East Jesmond over in Nicholsville, uh, depending on the result of the East Jesmond Collins game. So it depends on who wins there. Uh, Madison Central also did not have <laughs> their starting quarterback this week. There's a yeah. lot of injury problems going around, but uh, Cannon Centers it's went late down. In the season. <laughs> yeah, Cannon Centers went down with an injury a couple weeks ago, and so. Uh, uh, Nate Story, uh, actually a wide receiver slash defensive back, had to go in there and uh, you know, did an admirable job, six for twelve for forty-five yards. Uh, did have a touchdown. He threw a touchdown pass to Zach Holbrook, but uh, just uh, thirty-seven to six loss to Southwestern down in Somerset, and just you know, this late in the year to try to you know rework your offense and, and maybe you know kind of trying to do the Lynn Bowden thing, where you know with like Kentucky's doing now by putting a wide receiver yeah. at quarterback and that type of thing. And I mean, interesting position too because. You have to switch your quarterbacks, and then you, right. have, you have a playoff game coming up this weekend, so you don't really want to show a whole lot to Clark County. And, yes. Uh, so once I think once that score kind of got a little bit out of, out of hand, maybe they kind of peeled off some things, and uh, you might see some different things next week with them. Uh, but they only ended up with 187 yards of offense and trying to piece together uh, what they can. They do fall to 1-9, and nine and they uh, will make the, the short trip over to Clark County to play the GRC on Friday in the first round of the 6A playoffs. So... That's a team they played you know, relatively mm -hmm. close with last yeah. time. I think it was 42-34 when they played over in Winchester a couple weeks ago. So that's a matchup that uh, seems pretty favorable for them. But uh, of course, we'll have to see what they want to do at quarterback, if mm -hmm. they want to keep Nate out there or if they want to do some kind of wildcat thing with yeah. some of the running backs or what they want to do. There's options. I mean, yeah, yeah. They've yeah. got options. That yeah, they had, you know, at least that gave them a, a, some kind of a you know, dress rehearsal to go through mm -hmm. and kind of figure out what they might want to do uh, going forward. So, but... Uh, Let's see how that works out, but uh, certainly they uh, they feel like it's a favorable matchup, and for all the fans, it's a short road trip, but uh, you can't get any closer than that, just, just down <laughs> Boonesboro Road, right. so you can come over and watch the game if you want to. That brand new facility over at uh, GRC is, is fantastic, mm -hmm. so you go over there. And uh, so after uh, after we got done with cross country, <laughs> I, hustled, I hustled back to, to and got to Roy Kidd Stadium just as the Colonels were heading to overtime with Austin P. Uh, like I said, our, our, our good friend Zach was, was keeping track of the game for us, along with our, our buddy Bob Flynn, who used to work here as well. So I uh, rushed back in time to see the overtime, and unfortunately uh, did, I got there in time to see the Colonels lose in overtime. Uh, 25th rank Austin P uh, won at 28-21 in overtime. Governors got the ball first, ran one play, and got a 25-yard touchdown pass. Uh, the Colonels got the ball back in overtime, and... Uh, uh, actually, we're moving the ball a little bit, but then had a holding penalty, and that kind of mm. uh, did that kind of set everything off. And then uh, it, went, it was a fourth down, and they came up short, and so uh, that's a really, really costly loss for them. They fall to five, five and four overall, and three and two in the conference. Um, it's they fall into fourth place, but it's not. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's it was bad, but it's not the end of the world. I mean, right. there's still some potential there. They they still are only a game behind the teams in front of them. They have lost to two of those three teams, and they play the other team this mm -hmm. week. They have a trip to SEMO. So they, uh, it, it felt like a really bad loss. I know uh, Daryl McCleskey afterwards said it was crushing. And <laughs> but uh, it's, not, it's not over for them, but <laughs> certainly by any means. They do probably have to win the final three games, starting with the trip to SEMO this week. But uh, you look at that, uh, I think this week you have Martin playing um, 
Martin plays P this week, and those are two teams ahead of him. So one of those teams is going to get mm -hmm. a second loss. And so if you can, if you can, they can beat Semo, then they have two losses. And so it can really kind of open up. So there's, it's not over yet. I know it was, you know, there was a really sense of down around the stadium <laughs> after they lost that game. But it's not the end of the world. They still have a shot to to, be, to stay in the race. But they definitely do have to win those last three games. Daryl McCluskey had two rushing touchdowns. Uh, Parker McKinney threw three interceptions, and uh, Sam Hayward had a couple of field goals. But going to SEMO on Saturday, that will definitely be a must-win game. That's another ranked team. They're, they're ranked number 17 and right. uh, playing pretty well, and that's a long road trip out to Cape Girardeau. I've been, I've been there many times, and it's, it's one of those places where there's no easy way to get there. <laughs> <laughs> there's not an interstate that they runs... They just hide it. <laughs> there's no interstate that runs anywhere between anywhere near there at all. And mm. In all my years of covering Eastern football, that's the only place I've ever gone that I got a speeding ticket to. So, uh. <laughs> so uh, but I like Cape Girardeau. It's it's a great town. It's just if you have a, it's a hard time getting there. You, you gotta know? want to be there. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta yeah. have to find can't, it. Can't get there from here, as uh, as the old saying goes. <laughs> <laughs> but on Tuesday night, uh, we had the basketball season open up last. Yeah, Collins we did. Basketball season open up. So a very exciting game over yes, at, at McBrayer Arena with the uh, EKU picking up a 79-68 win over mm -hmm. Chattanooga. So. Tell us all about that. I mean, they were they were down by five at the half. They were down by five at the half. Um, the, Jamar Brown, Trey King had picked up two quick fouls mm -hmm. and had to sit. Houston King came and brought him in the game, hit a lot of three-pointers in the first half and kind of kept that really tight. And then um, they went to halftime, and A.W. Hamilton said that he made a brilliant speech. <laughs> <laughs> but, he couldn't, but he couldn't tell you what he, he said. He couldn't tell me what he said. I don't know if he didn't want to give away his secret or if it wasn't, if it wasn't worthy of uh, – you couldn't repeat it in public. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what he <laughs> – Yeah. When I, when I asked Jamari Brown about it, he started laughing. So yeah. <laughs> there have been some words we, don't, we can't repeat in this, in this uh, format. Well, whatever it was, it worked. <laughs> yeah. I mean uh, – 15-0, right? Yeah, 15-0 right, yeah. run coming out of the, out of the second half and, and – and then it was just all all over with. <laughs> I mean, they couldn't catch up Chattanooga to them after that. Um, but Darius Hicks just came alive. He yeah. had a wonderful game all the way through. Um, yeah. His first game, well, his first regular season game as a mm -hmm. colonel, he played in the exhibition uh, mm -hmm. game against Berea mm -hmm. College. But, I mean, just really showing his chops on that. Had uh, one of the leading scorers, mm -hmm. got his first double-double as a colonel, mm -hmm. did a really nice job, and uh, was just kind of proven... He hadn't played in two years. Yeah, yeah he got injured, injured at North Carolina State, mm -hmm. and then he had to sit out a year when he transferred, so he hadn't, hadn't played at all. And, uh, he could, man, he could, be, he could be a real impact player for this mm -hmm. team. I know the people around the program have been like, wait until this guy gets it. You're right. going to like this guy. Yeah. <laughs> and so, but yeah, he had, had 18 and 12, 18 points, 12 rebounds. Houston mm -hmm. King had 19 points, and Jamar Brown had four, 14. 14 points after coming back with her. Yeah, they both got two two fouls, and I was yeah. kind of wondering if, if A.W. would put them back in, and well, he did it, not. He left he let yeah. his team out there, and uh, uh, they were able to battle through it, like I said, to, down at five at the half, but he, he did, was not going to put those kids back out there to get a third foul. No. Well, it's, a, it's like what A.W. Hamilton said after the game. Um, they've got a lot more depth. Mm -hmm. got a lot more choices to go to. Last year, a lot of the offense went through Nick Mayo, and if mm -hmm. Nick Mayo had fouls, we were, you know, we were in some trouble. But this year, he's kind of built a team that he can kind of switch some pieces out. So he and Jamar Brown said, you know, we weren't worried. You know, mm -hmm. we didn't panic when I got two fouls. I just knew I was going to sit. And when my time came in the second half, he just, you know, needed to go out and play. And, and he did. <laughs> yeah, big, big minutes off the bench from mm -hmm. Lachlan Anderson, who yeah. had a lot of hustle plays, especially yeah. in the second half, running down balls and getting second chance opportunities. And yeah, it's a nice charge call too. Yeah, the Australian. He's 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 not like a crowd favorite. People like really like him. You know, he's, he's a great guy. He's always just like people seem to root for him and it's very positive. Love, love the kind of enthusiasm he brings and effort. And so, so you have to open the season one and zero. But then they got the big challenge on Friday night at Rep Arena. They will take on uh, what will be the number one team in America. Yes. I guess, <laughs> After Kentucky, last yeah, Kentucky was number two. They beat number one Michigan State on Tuesday night. I guess when the new rankings come out on Monday, they will be number one unless. The Colonels can pull off uh, uh, what would be a tr you know tremendous upset, which I guess is possible. I mean, it, we've we've seen stranger things happen, but uh, you talk I mean, to they, them afterwards. What do they have to say about playing Kentucky? Uh, they just said that they were going to do them. You know, if they if they didn't do them, they weren't going to change anything up just because it was Kentucky. They were going to still play and press for forty minutes like they do, try to get those turnovers. And uh, Jamar Brown said he was uh, really thankful and really excited about the challenge of going up against uh, UK and Rupp Arena so early in their season. So it can really kind of set the foundation for the rest of their season to go up against such good competition. Yeah, and like you mentioned in the season preview, they do play all every other in-state yes, Division One school this year. Northern, 
Murray, uh, Moorhead, Louisville, a lot of Western. Yeah. I mean, they UK they play them all, so it's it's very cool. The kind of the tour of Kentucky and yeah, uh, and then the next Friday night we'll have Western here, so mm -hmm. that kind of get hit all of those uh, those. Uh, so at the same 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 time, we're covering high school football games on Friday night. The Colonels will be yeah. up at up at uh, Rupp Arena, so we we won't be there. Our, yeah. our good buddy Zach will be there. He, he can kind of thank you, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> we mentioned him. We, he's like a third member of our staff. Yeah, know? he is. <laughs> we need to pay him something. <laughs> We're but, just very appreciative. Yeah, but, <laughs> but there's uh, only two of us, so. Yeah, yeah. It can only be in so many places. <laughs> but we will have uh, all, all three high school football games mm -hmm. covered on Friday night. Like I said, you will be in Berea. I'll yes. be over in Winchester. We'll and come out to those games. I mean, very, very important games for those those guys. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, uh, like I said, Southern is already. I know it's supposed to be cold. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is again. But yeah, Southern did beat Woodford already, so hopefully mm -hmm. they'll, they'll get a chance to advance on and. And then, uh, like I said, uh, may, hopefully Coach Centers and his guys can come up with some kind of a game plan at, at quarterback, and maybe they can kind of surprise Clark County with mm -hmm. some different things and make that work. And it would be great if they could win a game and uh, and move on and uh, and maybe have, maybe go back to Oldham County for another another game next weekend. Mm -hmm. So, And Berea obviously will be a huge underdog against uh, KCD, but like we said, they played them pretty tough the first time. And um, Everybody's uh, healthy. Jalen's back and everything. So. Yeah, and that... And that uh, you know, that group of kids is uh, what you know from, from what they've been through and to have the success they have now. It's I mean they go seven and three after you know going losing forty three straight games you know during one stretch. So it's a uh, it's a great story and it'd be a greater story mm -hmm. if they were able to pull off an, an upset and and do that. So so we'll we'll keep an eye on that one for you too. So keep an eye on our social media. The, and we are on Twitter on we are mm -hmm. Richmond R Sports on Twitter. We're Richmond Register Sports on Facebook and. Like I said, just follow us on there, and we'll keep you updated on everything. We, that's, we're, we're a good follow. We, we, we give you mm -hmm. lots of content. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you subscribe or follow us on those, those things, we will definitely keep, you, keep your timeline full of information and, and local information. We, right. we, we do take, like we always say, we do take great pride in the fact that we uh, focus on Madison County sports. And we take great pride in the fact that this is the only local, this is the only show that is 100% Madison County sports. We know there are other short shows out there, but they, they do focus on other things sometimes and we do not this is uh this is where we live this is mm -hmm. what we do and we are 100 percent madison county and i think we're we're kind of crunching the numbers and i think is it safe to say that we're are we the most watched sports show in madison county we have a lot of you so thank <laughs> you so much for, for watching I think we're just going to say that anyway we are the most watched sports show in madison county so but we have uh you know, we're very grateful for everybody that watches, and we're very grateful every week we have great guests. Yes, yes, uh, thank you to our guests. And just uh, every week we ask people to come on, and you know, I don't think we've been turned down by anybody. <laughs> so we've had some people who couldn't make it for some right. other reasons, but you know, we haven't had anybody saying, "Well, I want to be on there." <laughs> so, <laughs> so we appreciate everybody, and like I said, we do have great guests this week, and mm -hmm. we will have uh, our champions, state champions. Yes, Connor and Kiara O'Shea, and uh, Brady Masters, who finished second in the three A race, and Coach James Matuse will also be here. So they will all be here in just a minute. So. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. The Richmond Register Sports Show is brought to you by Nuevo Vallarta, a neighborhood restaurant with indoor and patio seating, a family-friendly environment, and quality, authentic Mexican food at reasonable prices. Nuevo Vallarta. All right, welcome back. We are here with Madison County's newest state champions. We have Connor O'Shea and Kiara O'Shea of Madison Central. They swept the Class 3A state championship cross country Saturday up at the Horse Park. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for being on. We appreciate it very much. Yeah. Got to say, I was there on Saturday, and it was really one of the, the coolest things. I've, I've been doing this for about 20 years, and it's really one of the coolest things I've ever gotten the chance to, to cover. I mean, just uh, I mean, you went off first mm -hmm. and did what you did. You just ran away from the field. <laughs> And then you went out and did the did the same thing. Yeah. So, kind of, what were your your thoughts after? You know, what were your, what were your thoughts watching him after you? Um, it was just it was really exciting to like see all of his hard work pay off after I had won. It's just it's a great feeling. Yeah, I mean, it's my first time any pair of siblings have ever won the, the same uh, state title in the same year. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, she had won it before. Mm -hmm. This is her second straight year winning the uh, yeah. the Class A race, and you had never won it before. Right. Um, and uh, so just talk about well and then watching her win right before I was set up to race it really put the pressure on because it was like a goal of ours to both win this season so it really awesome to see it like happen 
Yeah. yeah, you won last year as an eighth grader, mm -hmm. and we were talking to you afterwards, and you were really, uh, I don't say surprised, but you were, you were pretty, very humble, and you didn't really expect to win, even mm -hmm. though you won very easily. And this year, you, you won very easily again, <laughs> and uh, but still, you, you, you still, still seem very humble, and you didn't really, you know, it's like you didn't come into it like mm -hmm. I'm expecting to win. You yeah. said there were some other kids that you hadn't raced against, and so you really weren't sure what their times were going to be, but once again, you, you made it look <laughs> easy. Kind of. Yeah. What was your, your kind of thoughts going into it? Um, I had been watching like the times of other girls drop like a lot during each race mm -hmm. and my times hadn't really gotten much better like throughout the season. I had got like one or two good races and so I knew that like they hadn't been pushed as much and I hadn't either so I was just, I didn't go off too hard at the start just to see if anyone would come with me and once I saw that no one was really going to come out hard, I just kind of went. So you weren't. You, you say you hadn't had a good season, but you won every in-state race you've, you've been in this year. Yeah. So, but uh, and that's you know, like we talked about after the race, that that is your style. I mean, you just like mm -hmm. to go right to the front. You just go right out there and set the pace. And uh, that's I don't know if that's unusual with cross-country runners, but it's it's how you just. Mm -hmm. you know, I guess you like to be at the front right away and just go. Yeah. It. I, I just. It gives me confidence throughout the race, just knowing I'm up there. I don't have to like push myself extra hard like at the end to be able to like win and be up there. Yeah, you went to, to you went eighteen twenty nine forty two, and you mm -hmm. said that really wasn't even that great of a time for you. <laughs> no, my t my best time is like forty seconds faster. So yeah, and it was the yeah. same course layout as last year, right? Mm, yeah, because they they had moved it last year, I think, right? Because mm -hmm. there was a lot of rain and they pushed it on kind of on the back side of the horse park. Yeah, it was the same course, so you were obviously pretty familiar mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. It just it helps to have like a familiar course and like you know like where your turns are and where you can make good moves. Yeah, and you and you guys do other other races there mm -hmm. throughout the year, so it's yeah. not like you're unfamiliar with that that course. So and Connor, I mean, you unlike your sister, you, you don't really like to go to the front. That's not really yeah, your style. Right. Your mother told me afterward you you kind of like to stay in the pack and then yeah. kind of come on at the end. But uh, yeah. you had you had Brady Masters with you, and I guess you guys kind of mm -hmm. went to the front. He kind of helped you set the pace. Yeah. And, yeah, it definitely helps having like a teammate up there that you can push with and work with. So it worked out this race. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it was your, your last high school race. I mm -hmm. it was it kind of just, hey, let's go for this. Yeah, and, right. Right, just put everything we've been working for up. So, yeah. And by, all. Yeah, by the time you came off at the backside, you, you had mm -hmm. a pretty, pretty comfortable lead. Did you kind of know that at that point? Kind of, but I felt like there were like kids catching me. So it was like pushing me to keep, keep going. Yeah, and I guess we were, we were kind of joking before we came on mm -hmm. the air here that you know, Brady came on like gangbusters at the end. That's and then right. He ended up finishing second. I think yeah. he, you know, he, he had a great kick at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's awesome to have a teammate finish right behind you. I know he'll be back next year, so yeah. it's a great feeling. Yeah, Brady's just a sophomore, so he's going to pick up the mantle from you, and maybe mm -hmm. he'll win it next year. That's so. right. So this is this is now, I mean, between the two of you, you won two, mm -hmm. you won one, and then mm -hmm. Brandon Fields won one in 2015, so it's yeah. just four titles for the for the school <laughs> four state titles in the for the school in the last uh, five years so yeah there's a definitely a cross-country legacy here mm -hmm. <laughs> so. yeah. well, speaking of legacy we uh obviously you know we we, uh, we did a nice big feature on you guys last year and the, the family connection and obviously your mom and dad both ran at eastern mm -hmm. yeah and but interesting enough though you guys weren't runners at first. You guys first no. both started playing soccer. So yeah. I guess both of you trying to tell me the transition from soccer to cross country. Well, for me, I kind of was getting wore out from soccer. And then I would always watch my parents run because they, they were still running like off and on. And my mom was still running all the time. So it kind of just like I would go out and run with her maybe for a few days. And I just kept kept with it. And it was fun. So I kind of watched him trans transition into running. Mm -hmm. And I just... So, uh, soccer was like starting to get boring. I've been doing it for a while, and just the more I started running, the more I fell in love with it. Yeah, because yeah, he, he, he switched over first, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you went first. So. Yeah. You couldn't convince your brother, though. Gavin's no. Gav, 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 <laughs> a pretty good soccer player, no. though. So. Yeah. But he's, uh, he had a pretty good year for Madison Central. What about you have a younger sister? Is she, is she a runner? What is, what is She's this? a runner, but she dances a lot. That's her thing, dancing. So. Okay. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about more about your parents. I mean, obviously, they, they met at Eastern. Your mom was a four-time All-American at Eastern. Uh, and uh, obviously, you had a lot of success there. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, she, she never kind of pushed you guys into to running. But mm -hmm. I, she was very happy yeah. when you guys decided to, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> to do Because she wants us to have fun with what we do. So she doesn't, like, force us to do anything. 
because once you're forced into something, it doesn't become as much fun. So. You didn't feel like any. You didn't feel any pressure on you from your mother. No, nah, never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, your dad was a runner too, and your dad mm -hmm. was from Ireland. Mm -hmm. So they, they met at the Eastern back in the '90s. So you, you guys uh, have a pretty cool running <laughs> running legacy in the family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, um, kind of talk about uh, looking ahead here, Connor. I mean, uh, you talked all about, all about where you want to go to school. Or you want to race. Yeah. So right now, I want to run at East Carolina. That's where I've uh, set on running, and. Uh, I don't know what I want to major in or anything yet, but that's what school I'm going to. So, right. yeah, I mean, you got three more years. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I guess the it would be amazing. I don't know if anyone's ever won five state championships. But I guess <laughs> there's the the possibility that you could do yeah. that. So, I mean, is that obviously something you? Yeah, definitely. I'll definitely keep working towards those state championship titles. Yeah, and obviously you guys do uh, are on the the track and field team mm -hmm. as well. You run the mm -hmm. long events. Uh, uh, you both qualified for the state state meet last year in the with 800 or 1600 1600 and 3200 and you as well you were in the yeah i i, w I qualified for both but i just ran the 3200 yeah. okay we'll talk about the the train the difference in training for the from cross country to track i would say track there's some more speed workouts like shorter distance just to get your legs moving faster because track is obviously a little bit shorter than cross country Mm -hmm. yeah. Most of our workouts are done on the track just to get used to like the surface. Yeah. It's kind of interesting too. I know when uh, uh, the girl from South Laurel, Phoebe McCown, mm -hmm. and she she also does both, and uh, you know she she seems to kind of more excel in those sixteen to thirty two yeah. type range. So it's, it really is kind of a different animal. People just think, mm -hmm. oh, it's just mm -hmm. racing. You just you just run, but you know yeah. she seems to do better in those, and than she does in the longer one. You usually be the mm -hmm. longer one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Uh, like I said, um, uh, they said your, bro your brother is a pretty good soccer player. You guys, mm -hmm. you guys, you guys never play soccer anymore, no? You know, not even for fun. <laughs> no, really. maybe I'll, <laughs> I'll kick ball with him occasionally, but that's all. Totally give up on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, like I said, it's really cool. I mean, the, what you guys did to make history. That the, like I said, the, like you said afterwards, there was something you guys have been thinking about since since last year because you you finished thirteenth mm -hmm. last year. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and you got him. You went from I think what fortieth to thirteenth to first, right? In the three years. I think so. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it just helps like going into this season. I had a lot of confidence, so just like being able to know like know what you've done and like trust your training, it helps. Yeah. In the past few years, uh, it's been Robert Ladur. You guys worked mm -hmm. with along with Monty Orchard. Yeah. And this year, uh, James Matuse has taken over. So kind of talk about James. Yeah, he's a great coach, and he always pushes us to be our best. So. Mm -hmm. He'll yell at you if you're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, he has, I mean, obviously he was an All-American at Eastern, mm -hmm. too, so he has a great great tradition yeah. there, too. So kind of talk about working with James. Um, he definitely expects you to, like, put, like, your whole heart into it, and he expects nothing but your best, and he's always, like, pushing you to get better. Yeah. And I'm, I'm assuming Robert and, and Monty are still around, though, and still mm -hmm. helping out. They're, yeah. They're, they're really yeah. They're, they're track and, track and running lifers there. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> they love that stuff, so I'm sure they're still helping you out. And, of course, and your mom as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Too. Uh, kind of yeah. talk about the role she plays in your training well since she's our mom like it, it doesn't really change she doesn't love on us more than any other kid <laughs> because she'll still yell at us just as much so you feel the same way yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right and during cross country season what's kind of what's a typical training week for you guys how many how many miles are you out running i see you guys running around town down through downtown and everything so how many, how many? um i would say around 50 to 55 miles a week and then we do workouts twice a week. Mm -hmm. My weeks are usually like 35 to 40. Yeah, yeah. Paid off in Paris mm -hmm. State Championships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Like, so really, really one of the coolest things I've ever been a part of as far as covering sports. So I just really, I'm glad I was there to see it. And <laughs> it was, uh, we, you know, we all kind of, obviously we expect you to mm -hmm. win, which I maybe we shouldn't expect that. But I mean, <laughs> if, if it, I mean you, you've, you've been so dominant, we yeah. kind of expected that. But when we were hoping for you and we, yeah. We even talked about it last week on the show. We are like, it would be so cool if they were able to do that. So, yeah. so once again, congratulations. Uh, thank you guys so much for being thank on. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, just uh, congratulations. And let's like, see if we can, you can get a few more. So <laughs> it's like, like a yearly tradition to follow you to the horse park and watch <laughs> yeah. the state championship. Yeah. But all right, well, congratulations to both of you. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. All thank right, you. We'll be right back with James Matuse and Brady Masters. The Richmond Register Sports Show is brought to you by... Nuevo Vallarta 
a neighborhood restaurant with indoor and patio seating, a family-friendly environment, and quality, authentic Mexican food at reasonable prices. Nuevo Vallarta. Welcome back. We are here with Madison Central Cross Country and Track and Field Coach James Matuse and uh, Madison Central sophomore Brady Masters, who finished second on Saturday in the Class 3A Boys State Championship, Cross Country State Championship over at the Horse Park. Thank you guys for being on. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Brady. I mean, it Thank was. You, um, you kind of. Uh, we were just kind of talking with Connor there, and mm -hmm. Connor doesn't usually go to the front at the beginning of races, but mm -hmm. you kind of went out there with him. You guys kind of set the pace, and mm -hmm. I guess. Coach, you were telling me afterwards that was kind of the plan, to go out there and mm -hmm. kind of be yeah. aggressive and make a run at it. Mm -hmm. Talk about the game plan coming in. So, State's been like something we've been thinking about for a long time, and mm -hmm. just the plan was to just go all out and just go for it, because we've been talking about going one, two, three, like as a team, and just doing, just State was just very important. So, yeah, I just wanted to make sure and get out there. So yeah, yeah. and. You know, you came. We came off the. You came off the backside of the course, and you came mm -hmm. down the hill, and you were in about fifth place. Mm -hmm. And by the time I made it back over to the finish line, you had just rocketed up the the field at the end there. Mm -hmm. Talk about the last stretch there, where you went from about fifth to second. So I was just coming across the the back half of the field into the front, and it was like a thousand left, I think. And I was just thinking, like I was just looking at the runners in front of me, and I was thinking. Like I could see in their body language that they're, they were like tiring, and I usually have a strong finish. And I was thinking, I have nothing to lose. I just need to go for it, and it just worked out, I guess, for me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how, I mean, obviously, it was it was great for you to finish second. But talk mm -hmm. about just the, the experience of of helping helping uh, uh, Connor win that first state championship. Which you you kind of went mm -hmm. out there and pushed him and helped yeah. helped him. Win yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, we like always like in every race we both helped each other work through it and. It's just about like teammates helping each other get through the race, push each other. I, even though he's usually beats me, I, I feel like I always push him, and he always pushes me too. So yeah, well, I mean, you're only a sophomore. I mean, <laughs> so now he's he set the bar for you to follow yeah. now. So I mean, yeah. kind of talk. I mean, do you, do you have a you pretty close relationship with him? Do you guys train yes. together? I mean, yeah. is he kind of got a like, mentor to you a little bit, or kind of yes. like a big brother type thing? Yeah, definitely, I would say so. Yeah, we're really good friends. Okay. Well, James, like I said, talk about the the, you know, the the game plan. Like I said, you told me afterwards that you like you guys were just saying you wanted to go for it. You, yeah. It's obviously his, Connor's last shot at a championship, and you guys wanted to just pull all the chips in and go for it. Yes, uh, we knew coming in that uh, we were competing with teams with depth. We did have the depth necessary. Uh, we knew our defense was not very strong, like uh, Sanex or Trinity or even Connor. Or even Davis County, we knew those schools had good defense, so we were going to rely on our offense. And so our offense really came strong. Kana, Brady, Kyla, they all worked strong. And I could hear Trinity screaming, uh, it's the battle of the thirds. And I knew on the battle of that, we will get them. <laughs> and then uh, it will all come down to one on one. And uh, we'll keep working on uh, that defense. That's what we're struggling on, but we will perfect that defense one day. <laughs> well, these, these kids mostly had worked with uh, Robert Ladur and Monty Borchard the last couple of years, and you'd been around the program as well, but you kind of took over this year. This is your first year as the head coach of both the cross country and the track and field programs. So you kind of start off with a bang, huh? Just sweeping, sweeping two state titles. <laughs> well, yes. Uh, I've been, uh, when, when I moved, uh, I started teaching at Centro about uh, 10 years ago. They invited me and I volunteered to help and uh, I seen uh, that the, the program had the potential of getting better and I started helping Bob and uh, Mondi and we worked it through that and uh, you know initially my philosophy was not really well understood and uh, I knew someday I'll get some guys who will be able to buy it since I worked with Brandon initial was my initial pilot project. Mm -hmm. And uh, these guys, they came in and um, they showed we can put it in and uh, one day we will perfect it if I can get six, seven guys, ten guys who can understand what it takes to do something different since it's a unique training style and a unique racing style. And uh, 
when we get it there, they will know who we are. Yeah, we're talking about the difference between the sort of switching coaches here. How is he different from, from um, Robert and Martin? It's just, I mean, they they have different ways of doing like specific training, but it's like like overall, like the big picture of it's the same usually. So it wasn't a huge difference in that, but just like. I don't know, Lador was more picky on like eating mm -hmm. and different stuff like that. And Matus is more just you need to eat because you're running so much and you just need to eat to build that muscle. So just little things like that is different. But it's, I mean, it's been pretty much the same. Like Matus has still been my coach since I was in eighth grade. So, yeah, like I said, this story, like I said, he was back with Brennan Fields in 2015, who also won a state championship. So this is, yeah. this program has four state championships in the last, in the last five years. So that's, that's And that's, and that's, cool. that's a good thing, really. <laughs> Madison County can uh, really see that uh, the kids have the potential if they are exposed. And we would wish, you know, looking down the middle school, we almost can be, we can say we are, the only county in the state with no middle school program. And when we look football program of the middle school program comes in, which mean, means they have a good feeder program. We do not have a feeder program. And we volunteered our time on the middle school within the limits of KHSM. And when they were in seventh grade, I think uh, they won middle school state a couple years ago. And we thought that would really stimulate the board to see that we need that feeder program. And uh, until we can get that going, we might struggle, but we'll keep working and we'll reach out and we'll preach that and these kids will, can, can tell them, look at our middle schoolers. Brady won middle school as a eighth grader, Kiera won middle school as a seventh or eighth grader. She won KHSA from eighth grade. So our eighth graders and seventh graders are there. And what would happen if we add now fifth and sixth graders training within KHSA regulations? We don't know what the future would look like. Yeah, yeah the more the merrier. Yes. Co Coach brought up something great there. I want you to kind of expand on talking about it. He's talking about playing defense. And it, it really is, a, 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 you've got, a, it's a team sport. It's an mm -hmm. individual sport, but it's also a team sport. Mm -hmm. And you've got seven guys out there. And mm -hmm. he was talking about playing defense. Because trying to talk about how that works and you're, you're out there working together mm -hmm. uh, to try to not only mm -hmm. you know go to the front, but also to kind of I don't know, yeah. block other teams, but yeah. position yourself better. So. Um, he, he's been telling us like for the past few weeks that we, like all seven of us need to go out and run for ourselves, like individual, like run for, you know, our individual selves. But we also, we've been working as a team for so long. So we always, like Connor mentioned the other day in an interview that we need to trust each other. Like we need to run for, go out for ourselves, but we also need to trust everyone else that everyone else is doing their thing. And we have that six and seven guy to, you know, block other teams points if they get in front. So it's just kind of we look at all the other teams and see where everyone's at. So yeah, I mean, what's the kind of the communication like out there? Is it kind of is it obviously if you get kind of um, separated out amongst the field, it's hard to communicate. But when you guys, yeah. especially on Saturday, when you guys were near the front together, do you, uh -huh. is there verbal communication or do you kind of just know what each other is going to do? Yeah, we kind of like before the race, we kind of plan it out. But like during the race, like as a team, like as two teammates we don't really verbally say anything but i mean matuse is always out there mm -hmm. in races and he always talks to us and helps us with that way so yeah yeah the coaches kind of cut across at different points yeah. and they kind of they know where to weave their way to catch you and <laughs> yeah. kind of be yeah. able to verbalize it to you a little bit it is a team sport so we did want to mention like i said the, the girls the, the boys overall did finish fourth uh, like i said brady masters went here was second Kyler stewart was 26th uh wesley stokes was 81st marcus hutchinson was 97th noah halloran 115th Austin Jacobson was 183rd, and on the girls' side, they finished 18th as a team. Uh, you had M uh, was it Emily or Amelia? Amelia. Yeah. Amelia Reynolds was uh, 80th. Uh, Jamie Google was 93rd. Meredith Campbell was 193rd. Audrey Jackson was 243rd. Uh, Daria Tabor 267th, and Kaylee Boyd was 284th. So I'll make sure we get all those kids named Yeah, as well. and when you look at the girls' team, really very young. Most of them seventh, eighth graders. They weren't even meant to go to re to state since they were ranked sixth at our region, mm -hmm. and they fought their way to finishing that, and therefore punched their tickets to state. And uh, we thought maybe they'll finish <laughs> last, <laughs> and they get in there and uh, finish eighteen there again. That's another 
really great team that worked so hard uh, since people only see Kiera but they don't know Kiera as teammates who help her and they keep her motivated to keep moving yeah, so it's not just the boys but the girls are also yeah. working hard we might be talking about them sooner or later yeah Jamie's only what a seventh grader she's seventh like, grader big. I mean, yes <laughs> but uh, they fight as they are you know TNT comes in small packages so. <laughs> All right, we do also want to mention there were a couple of local kids in the Class A race, uh, Class A boys race. Uh, models Colton Coyer was uh, 85th, and uh, Prius Sawyer, Sawyer Bailey was 175th. So we want to make sure we mention those kids as well. Uh, they both they both earned the right to be there, so we want to make mm -hmm. sure we mention those kids. But um, just once again, congratulations on all your success, man. It's uh, thank you. I'll thank be you honest, so much. We, we were joking before that we, you know, I was so focused on watching Connor that I didn't, I didn't <laughs> really see you. Can you you just caught fire there at the end and, and just sprinted up and. It, because uh, he he came up the front stretch and there was nobody behind him. I mean, yeah. He was so far ahead, and then uh, you just came up like a bolt of lightning out of nowhere and, and took second. So that's that's really cool. So congratulations you. to you, congratulations, you. Coach, on a great year. And I like, thank you. Just like Connor, Connor and Kiara, he also runs track for you. He'll be doing uh, the eight hundred and sixteen hundred, or yeah, eight hundred, sixteen hundred, thirty-two hundred. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So they'll be back out there in a couple of weeks. Give them, give them a little time off, right, before they get back out there? <laughs> yeah. No, no. no. We go for season, so we don't get time off. So we go for season, which will go all the way through December. So we we'll do Youth Nationals and Foot Locker, mm -hmm. which goes into December. And then uh, we'll go to a few indoor meets. Mm -hmm. And so that will be January, February, March. And I don't see us. So, <laughs> yes, our, our off season is to just get back in the machine and they keep working. Don't you even get a week off or something like that? Well, <laughs> oh, that is that, that's three months off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, congratulations. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys being on the show. I mean, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, it's it's uh, been a, a once again, it's great to have you guys watching. Appreciate everybody that's out there, and uh, we'll see you next week. The Richmond Register Sports Show is brought to you by. Nuevo Vallarta, a neighborhood restaurant with indoor and patio seating, a family-friendly environment, and quality, authentic Mexican food at reasonable prices. Nuevo Vallarta. Almost two decades. That's right, I've covered local sports in Madison County for almost two decades. The Madison Central Indians, the Madison Southern Eagles, the Model Patriots, the Brea Pirates, the EKU Colonels, and the Brea College Mountaineers. I've covered them all. Football, basketball, baseball, softball, volleyball, track, cheerleading, golf, youth sports, and more. It's all being covered by the Richmond Register. Join us for a brand new weekly sports program. Watch the Richmond Register Sports Show every Thursday at 9 p.m. Be sure to like, share, and follow us on all our social networks and to subscribe to the Richmond Register online or get your own subscription delivered. If it's sports in Madison County, we cover it.